Okay, so this is our fourth and final video from the IFC conference in Mexico City. And obviously we're in an interesting place here, just about 40 minutes north of Mexico City, there is the pyramids of uh, an, a pre-Aztec culture. And it is fascinating to be here. And I'm standing in under a pepper tree, uh, which is really cool. And you can take the seeds and put them in your mouth and it, it really has a great kick on it. So that's interesting to see where pepper comes from. But um, I guess the one thing walking around here is just, nothing is very, very little is known about this uh, civilization. And, and from an education point of view and from the digital world, uh, it just gets me thinking about, is it impossible from now on to actually eradicate a culture entirely? I mean, um, here you can just destroy everything, but when, when something is digital, and what does that mean for civilization going forward? It's just an interesting thought. But to go back to the uh, conference itself, so AI was a dominant theme of the conference, but it was interesting to hear how it's been used. And AI is already here and it's been used. Most institutions, and including Alison ourselves, we're using it obviously on the customer support side, you know, FAQs, when someone has a query, uh, you can use AI to respond to it really quickly. And because Alison has hundreds of thousands of people on the website every day, it's really important to find automatic ways to respond or else the costs are too high. But other people are using it for, you know, certainly the private universities are using it from a, an admin point with students. Uh, if they have queries that are uh, unusual or whatever, AI is able to capture even the most uh, odd question that they'd have. And again, it reduces the costs. Uh, content, definitely, Alison using it to reduce the cost and increase the speed at which we can create courses. We get a lot of people asking us to publish courses in AI, but at the moment, AI is still a little bit uh, um, clunky and we can identify an AI course uh, fairly quickly. But the, the quality is improving and it shouldn't be dismissed because it does help you to get to a good structure of a course pretty quickly. It's just after that that it needs a bit of human intervention. And as AI develops, that's, that even is going to be dealt with. So that, that's really AI is being implemented. But in terms of the future of learning, I guess everyone has agreed that the main w w way that AI is going to be used is just in the hyper-personalization of learning. And, and that everybody has an individual learning path. The idea of degrees and diplomas and certs is really going to go away and everyone will have an individual learning path. I, I think that's how Alison is set up. If you have a, we have a free LMS and if you're setting up le uh, you know, learning for your staff, yeah, you, you will create a very individual, you can create a very individual learning path for your, for your staff. And, and again, of course, that's free. The courses are free, the, the learning management uh, system is free. But I guess after all of the reflection of that, uh, if you can automate all of the hyper personalization, which I think you can, and you have one system that's really doing it, then we're in the situation just like courses and assessments and tests is that the marginal cost of sharing it and having one extra person use the system is really low. So I guess that's where Alison is going, trying to drive all costs of education to zero. So we're doing it with courses, we're doing it with psychometric tests. But you see with the hyper-personalization, you can again create computer systems using AI that cost very, very little outside of the raw hardware costs to run. And that for me was an exciting insight, takeaway, I guess realization. I knew a little bit about it beforehand, but I guess from talking about it just for constantly for a couple of days, it, it's going to enable a platform like Allison to genuinely provide not only free courses but free systematic hyper personalization and that is the future I can't see that not being possible and that opens up amazing opportunities for everyone uh, and including everyone in the world can engage in learning on any subject at every level in every language and that just says to me learning will absolutely be free uh, and can be free and will be free but we just need to be determined to make it so because the biggest thing that Alison finds and we find as a team is is the incumbency uh, there's a lot of people that make money out of the way the education really is right now and they have the ear of government mostly right around the world it's a big money business uh, I was part of the panel that finished up the, con the, the uh, the conference yesterday and I was saying that education should be a much smaller business than it is today. It takes five trillion dollars worth of uh, of the world's economic uh, output every year to pay for the education but with AI we can make it much smaller. 
So I get, that's the takeaway. I hope you've enjoyed the, the few videos. We haven't done this before. Uh, share it or comment on it if you think it's interesting to follow me around the world or the team. And thanks to Judy behind the camera here and Olivia who was here picking up on all of the all the leads and all of the people that we talked to. So we're going to be back to South America and it's the beginning of a very interesting adventure here in this part of the world. Obviously uh, North America here but part of the Spanish part, speaking part of the world. So thanks for listening and uh, let us know that you listened. All right, take care. Bye.